right, everybody, I am here back at it again. Um, wanted to break this apart into two videos. The first video there was just to show you the initial opening and unboxing of this weapon. Um, this is one where I'm gonna get a little bit more into the inside. I'm going to take a look, pop things out. I'm gonna start by uh, pulling this rear pin. Um, it does seem to be pretty stiff, but you got it there. Uh, first thing I like to do, I'm gonna take the, make the guns clearly safe there. I, last video you saw me pull this out of it. Um, uh, so I'm gonna switch it off as safe, move it to fire mode. We're gonna see what this trigger looks like. Um, if you can see here, this is a plastic polymer trigger. This will probably be getting replaced by me soon. For now, I haven't seen any real major complaints. Um, I do see that after clicking it once there, there is a bit of a smudge on it. I'm not sure if that's coming from the plastic itself or coming from the metal. Uh, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> I'll just worry about this side of the weapon. Um, this trigger is going to be an issue for me. Um, I'm used to a little bit more sensitive triggers. This has significant pull. Um, probably six six pound pull maybe less um, but yeah we'll get into that a little bit later I am going to actually take this plastic here I'm gonna pop out the buffer tube and buffer spring Let's see about that there so let me get this trigger back here um, well, that's actually a pretty standard buffer tube. Doesn't look to be too bad. Buffer spring also isn't too bad. It's not oiled at all. Um, I, a lot of people don't, but I like to keep my buffer spring well oiled. I like to keep my bolt well oiled. I like to keep my trigger well oiled. There's a saying as everything functioning like a well oiled machine. Well, the reason is because it's true. Uh, the well oiled machine will run better, it will maintain longer, it will be easier to use in the future. Um, this is an adjustable stock here, um, if I slide this forward, pop the pin back in, I'll put the buffer tube back in in a second, switch it back to safe. I'm a 6 foot 4 inch male, so typically I'm going to keep this pretty far out for hunting, other things along those lines. If I'm feeling like I'm in a situation where I'm going to need to move, I'll scoot it down. I'll probably replace this as well. It's going to be more of an aesthetic than it is going to be for anything too functional. An adjustable buttstock is an adjustable buttstock to me. Um, but I, I'm playing, I'm seeing myself doing some uh, FDE to where my trigger here well, not my trigger, but my uh, buttstock, my hand grip, and probably my quad rail. Well, maybe not my quad, my quad rail that I plan on getting, but there will be some FDE components on this. It's and if you don't know what FDE is, it stands for flat dark earth. It's the sandy color you look. It's kind of what people think of when they think of an M4 or something from Desert Storm type of camo, where it's just kind of a flat, dark ground colored. Um, camo. Uh, all in all, um, I'm not too upset with the the back end of this weapon with the lower. Um, I do see where I will be getting a cleaning kit um, for the weapon and including some uh, oil that was not put in here. Um, since I've gone through the, the lower receiver here, um, let's go through the upper still can't get over the flip up sight that was provided. Start by uh, removing the bolt. Pick up a charging handle. So you just sit this down for a second. This is a semi-automatic bolt. This they did oil. This looks like a, well I wouldn't say well oiled, but it is oiled. That's a positive. Um, 
let's see. Everything, actually, that is pretty well oiled. I said to move it a couple times. The retainer pin and everything looks fine. The firing pin um, is in there. I mean, it's, of course it's in there, but still. Um, this is standard semi-automatic receiver, or bolt, I meant to say. The standard operating uh, semi-automatic bolt. Um, a lot of people will grind this finish off. Um, there are positives and negatives to that. Um, having the flat steel, a lot of people think it feels smoother, makes the weapon action a little bit better. Personally, I don't like to do it because that just means I have to oil it more than I already plan on doing. And I, if you haven't heard my previous video and this one, I do oil my weapon often. Um, so this bolt seems to be fine. I will probably upgrade the charging handle um, to something a little bit more grip, a um, little bit wider maybe. Standard one isn't terrible. It's not great, not bad. Something that you can deal with. Um, for paying $499, I really can't complain too much about any of this. The, uh, but yeah, now that I have the bolt back in here, um, I'll just put this back in a way. Lock it to the rear. Everything seems to be well functioned. Um, I do want to take a look at this mag, see if it's the exact same as the mag that I had before. Get in here, poke around, see what I like about it, see what I don't. This is 30 round magazine. So all in all, this is what you're going to look like with this bad boy in here. Um, one thing I think that I might get also is I believe Magpul or uh, UTG sells a thing that goes around your bolt catch here. As you can see, being a uh, right-handed shooter. I'm able to release my magazine real easy right here. That was real touchy, but I'm able to release my magazine real easy on the right hand side. But when I move this up, move this in, this hand is unable to get over here. I have to take my hand away from my firing hand, hit this here to release. That's an issue for me. I like to stay to where I'm able to I drop my mag, I put my mag in, I'm ready to go. Get my hand back up into a firing position then I can release the bolt from here. They sell a thing that catches on here and uh, basically it's like a flat um, little, it goes across underneath the uh, trigger guard and while you're firing you can hit that, it'll release your bolt, move it forward. Um, as you can see it does have the Picatinny T-rail to where if you wanted to mount a sight, you could go ahead and put that up on there. I will say, with the front sight post being so high, you may want to put a riser in. Um, honestly, with the gun being so inexpensive, I don't want to say cheap, because this seems to be pretty well made um, for the price. I was able to get it for $4.99. Um, I'll put the link to that in the description. I think I mentioned that before. Um, just trying to make sure I didn't leave anything out. But for paying $4.99, I might just, if I want to put a scope on here, use it for hog hunting, that kind of thing, and not use it for anything else, I'll I'll pop the uh, the front sight off of this here, and replace the gas tube, put some uh, quad rail on here, and then just put a standard scope up. Um, I might even leave the mag pull front back, uh, rear sight. Just because I can, it'll lay down flat. It won't mess with the aesthetic at all. Um, if you have any comments, questions, um, I do have two other friends that just bought this exact weapon as well. What I plan on doing um, here in future videos is I'm going to help them anytime they have anything they want to replace on their weapon. 
I will do install and tutorial videos for those um, items. When they go to mount things and put things on the weapon as well, I'll see if I can get them on here um, just so they can show you what they're doing. There's a lot of variability with these weapons. You have a lot of ability to switch in, change out parts, pieces, make it look however you want to. You can have things from sights to um, grips, a forward grip. You can have bipods, um, reflex sights, red dot sights, scopes. Uh, you can change out, uh, you can mount flashlights, red dot sights, uh, red dot laser sights. You can switch out stocks, you can switch out grips, you can switch out lowers, you can switch out triggers. This weapon is basically a shell that you can switch a lot out for very inexpensively. You have UTG um, products that are pretty well priced. You have Magpul, which keeps their things pretty affordable as well. Um, if you get more into the higher end things, which I think if you're buying one of these weapons, you're buying it because you're trying to save money. Um, you want a good weapon that's going to work well that's to uh, save money. So I'll show you inexpensive ways to upgrade this weapon as I upgrade my weapon. Um, I do have money going in other places so these videos will be kind of variable it won't be scheduled or anything like that it'll just be when I get it something I want to put on here um, but again if you have any questions concerns feel free to uh, put those in the comments I'll answer them as best I can I try to answer everybody's comments or um, positive and negative feedback just let me know what you think and smash that like button subscribe you guys have a great rest of your day